Hey guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel at the Hunter Collective. Today we've got Sam in the chair. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm doing so well. You all right? Yeah, not bad. So, what are we doing? What's the plan? Uh, oh, good question. Uh, so we're going for a short back inside. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very sort of like free with that, like um, whatever sort of really, yeah. Whatever you really think, whatever you inside. think. Okay. Yeah. So what, what did you, what have you been having done in the past? Uh, just yeah, as as you said, like it was like a staple, just like you know the just the basic, basic um, short back and sides exactly, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And how 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 were you wearing the top? What were you doing with the top? Uh, let's just to the side like that. And then okay. No, yeah, nothing too nothing too special. Okay, no worries. And what are you looking for today? Are you are you open to suggestion? Are you yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. New. Okay, sounds yeah, cool. Okay. Um, first of all, what do you do for a living? Uh, I just work in cyber security. Okay. Yeah. Cyber security. Okay, yeah, so okay. not necessarily client facing. No. Wear suits? Uh, more sort of like penetration testing, which is... Oh, okay, no worries. Okay, cool. Do you, do you have to wear anything smart clothing-wise? Uh, sometimes. Some days. But some days. Time it's, uh, quite chill, but some days you have to wear smart. Right, okay, okay. All right. I only ask you that because the hairstyle I've just been... You know, when you look at... When, I'm, when you give me a bit of free rein, I start thinking about what we could do with it. Yeah, yeah. And I think... I'm just going to check your hairline at the front. All right? I just want to see what it's like because it looks like it'll be low. Yeah, you've got a very strong hairline at the front there. I think you, again, obviously, I know you've got nothing in it right now and it's fallen down, but you sweep it over to one side, right? I find with your, your texture of hair, okay, because you've got a little bit of curl to that, a little bit of bend in there, right? It's a little bit finer. Mm. There's a lot of hair though, right? But it's just a fine texture when you feel it, okay? Now, I think it's a bit of a waste just popping it over to one side. I think if we give you something that you could have a few options with. So again, quite a nice heavily textured finish, but you could wear it maybe over, you wear it down, you wear it up. Mm. I just think something like that would be, I think it'd just suit your look as well. You've got, when you when you walked in, I was just thinking like, you look like that kind of like, don't, I mean, hopefully this isn't offensive, but you, you had that kind of like um, American varsity kind of college football kind of look about you, you know, because you're quite, you know, you, you definitely go to the gym, right? And you know, you, I just thought in your height as well, I just thought you've got that kind of look about you. And I thought something along the lines of that kind of haircut is like, again, short back. I was hoping you'd say short back and sides. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just think you can have, you know, if you pop a suit on, you can wear your hair smart, so you can wear it a bit messy, you can wear it up, you can wear it down. I just think it'd be a waste just wearing it one way, sure, personally. Yeah. So um, would you be okay going down to like a two or a three? Yeah. Yeah? Sound me. Like yeah, you happy with that? Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. What I want to do with the top for you is I want to give you an option to wear it Again, up off your face. I think when you've got a strong hairline, it's a shame to leave it, okay. to kind of hide it or not use it, okay? Yeah. Because, you know, the strength in hairline is a good thing, yeah, right? Yeah, well, I've still got it. But, well, yeah, well, that's exactly it, but it's true. We, we, yeah, you know, yeah. One day, we may all lose it, so yeah. while, we, while we've got it, we may as well flaunt it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, if we could do something like that, it'd be quite nice. And I just think, could you just lower your mask down for me a second, if that's all right? Just bring it right down to your jaw. Okay, yeah, I mean, solid, solid jawline. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something really square to show that off would be amazing. I'm just gonna turn to the camera, just so you can see. I mean, any model scouts out there looking for, for a model at the moment? Like that jawline's, uh, you know, envious. So, uh, yeah, I think we could, we could definitely do something really, really cool with sure. this. Definitely. I think you, you've got to look at it, what, the style that I'm thinking of as well. Brilliant. So, you happy just to leave it to me? Go for it. Oh, cool. Go crazy. Are you happy to leave it to me, not me explain <laughs> what I'm doing? Um, so, yeah, I'll just briefly talk you through it. So, two cool. back in size, I'm thinking, nice and low. Um, maintain a bit of weight just through here, just to match up to the jawline. Very wide jaw, very sh very square shape. Want to try and maintain a little bit of weight just through the corner, just to balance everything else. Okay. Perfect. If you go too short here, you can make it come out, so it almost make your jawline wider. We want to make this as lean as possible, so just keeping a bit of weight through there, a little bit of corner. Through the top, I'm thinking of taking off, say, not an awful lot to be honest, but more so towards the back. Mm. So essentially, I want your I want your fringe to be the longest point here, just that and that allows yeah. you to do a few things. It allows you to sweep it over, wear it down, wear it up, whichever you want to do. But I'm not going to overly texturize it, okay? Because you've got that texture of hair that almost moves around itself. So I think just a bit of product would enhance what we're doing. I think this is more about what we talk about: primary shape, which is the cut; secondary shape is the texture. I think this is more about a primary shape haircut more than adding loads of texture to it. So the haircut should do the talking for us. All right. So let's give it a shampoo and condition, and then we'll get started. All right. Cool. Thanks, man. Right, guys. So I have just shampooed and conditioned Sam's hair, and I'm just trying it off a little bit more than I normally do because I want to see how it feels when it's just towel dried. So yeah, if you can see that, when you start to scrunch it up a little bit, so when it's wet, it moves around a lot more than when it's dry. So if you see that when I scrunch it, mm. it curls an awful lot actually, more than I thought it would to be fair. 
The front doesn't as much because it's longer, but everywhere else curls up a little bit. So with that in mind, this haircut that I'm going to do, like just leave it a little bit longer on top, it's going to give you so many options, okay? So if you do fancy just having something really kind of quite, if you like fancy having a bit of curl in there, you know, because if you see a lot of styles now, there's a lot of curl going back in style, right? A lot of guys are really embracing their natural hair type, not trying to straighten it or, or, or perm it, for example. You've got the beauty where you could do everything with your hair at the moment. You could scrunch it and curl it. You could have a little bit of loose bend. You could have it quite straight. So you, you're not limited really. So I think you just need a length on top that lets you do that. And that's, that was my thinking when, when you came in, okay. was just having something like that. And you were up for it, which is good. So I'm gonna start by um, putting a horseshoe section in, okay? Again, I do this primarily to separate the back and sides from the top, just so I can focus purely on shape. It also stops you from cutting the crown too short or taking bits out of places you shouldn't really take them out of. So I'm going to wait this. He's got a double crown as well. Almost looks like three, but no, it's definitely two. So you've got one there and one there. Almost looks like you could have probably an extra one there, but I think that's just feeding off both of them. So that could be difficult if you had thicker, straighter hair. Mm. But because the way his hair is, it's that kind of fine texture, it won't be a problem too much. But again, you still want to leave that till the end. So again, this is something that, especially when you're working with double crowns, take them out the haircut until the very end. When you've dried everywhere off and the crown is left longer, you can really see how short you can take it. So you'll see that as we progress through the haircut. So with that being said, I'm gonna start at the crown for the horseshoe section because normally I'd start the temple on the right-hand side or the recession point on the right-hand side, but I wanna start with the crown. And what I'm gonna do is because it's not that strong. I mean, it is strong, but it's not kicking up. See, if that was, say, thick, straight hair, like super, super, straight, like mine, for example, or probably even more Liam's. If you ever, if you've ever seen Liam, <laughs> I don't know if you ever have, but Liam's got like that kind of ridiculously kind of thick, fluffy hair, similar to me, but just a different, slightly different texture. But if that was me or him or any of you guys watching with super, super thick, straight hair, that kind of fluffy hair that would just kick right out. So we're not having to worry too much just because the texture of Sam's hair. Um, but we are still gonna leave that till the end just because I don't wanna risk taking it too short. So. so I'm wetting it down now just because I'm starting to do my sectioning. So again, I, let, I towel dried it and then I started to just have a little play around with it just to see what I could do when it was wet. Just gives you a good indication what you can do when it's dry as well. So just having a little play around with it. But now I'm wetting it down and I'm working on the horseshoe section. So I've just come around to the left hand side, just because it flows easier for me, going from the middle to the left. And now from the middle to the right, using that as my guide, working it down and around. Match up that back bit first, like so. And then bringing it around to this recession point. There we go. I'm just going to start to perfect this now. There we go. I'm happy with that. That'll do. Cool. I'm just going to use a clip just to the front here. Just because I want to make sure that stays right out of the way. Because again, the front is the main focus for me on this one. It's the one that I'm really wanting to kind of leave with, not as long as it is now, but with a bit more length in it. Here we go. Right, so because we are 
working with the clippers on the back and sides and we're using grades. I'm going to start to dry this off. So again, I'm just finger drying this just as I'm going to start using the clippers. So I just want to dry it off so that I can see exactly what I'm doing, see the shape I'm creating. And also the texture of stamps here will change as well. So again, I want it to be as true as possible as it can be when I'm working with clipper work, especially working with grading. As I'm doing this, as I'm drying this off, I'm just feeling for the occipital bone at the back and just feeling how prominent it is. It's quite prominent, so I'm gonna probably have to work with that a little bit as well. It's good, another good way of doing another bit of consultation. I, you know, it might seem that I do too much sometimes, but I always, I always swear by prevention over cure. So I don't wanna to go too high up the back. And then obviously as, you, as we're, we're starting it out with it, you know, side profile, you just see the kind of occipital bone sticking out and protruding out, you know, which might change the look of the, of the, the profile, you know, of the silhouette. So I always try and feel for little things like that just to make sure that we're working with it, all right? Right, so I'm gonna start with the number three, okay? Now, I'm gonna start with the three and blend it down into a two. I always like to start at a higher grade. Um, per personally, I enjoy it because when you go on a higher grade, if there's any problem areas, like you come across a scar, or you come across a mole, or you, or you come across anything that could potentially cause you a bit of drama, then the longer the grade, it's sometimes easier to kind of hide and disguise. Where if you go straight down to your two, you can sometimes, you know, you, you might you might struggle to hide them things. So that just that little bit longer really helps, I find, when it comes to any problem areas. It's something that I, I, I'd done it from when I started off, really. Um, and it just saved me well, just in times when like, you're going over something, you're like, oh, there's a scar there, and you think, is that going to cover with a one or is that going to cover with a two? So if you, you've done it a bit higher up, it just gives you a little bit of leeway in case anything you come across anything you, you didn't expect. So three guard on, close guard. Now, if you look at this, when I put the comb on, if you lean your head slightly forward for me, Sam, you've got the occipital bone right there. Now, if I push in on this, can you see? You can almost see where it comes out. It kind of bellows out a little bit there. But you see it better when you place the comb on. So if you come to the side, Liam, so lean his head down and you place it on the neck. That is resting on the occipital bone. So you can see how much that comes out from the top. Okay, push a bit harder. Bring it off from the top here. That's balancing onto the occipital bone as well. So you see it meets in a big point there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work up to the bone and then work up and off with the blender. Okay, and then I can then I can graduate it slightly differently if I need to. So I can work down or I can kind of go over it again. Just don't want to go over it with the three. I just think it might it might show it too much. I don't think it's gonna work too much. So I'm gonna use that as my guide to work with, and then I'm gonna take it a bit higher as we get round to the side. Yeah. See, if I went higher with that, that would have shown through the three because obviously it's coming out, so it's almost like kind of disperses the hair slightly. So I think you would have looked like there's a little patch at the back. So I think we don't, we chose the right thing there. That's why I always think the prevention of the cure. So yeah, I'm glad I did that because I think if we'd have went on, if we'd have went higher, it would have shown it. It would have, it would have literally look from the, from the distance like it had a little scar at the back, a little bump at the back. Through the sides, I'm gonna take it to about here. I want, that, I want to still keep a little bit of shape through the top there just to match up with the jawline.
Let's take another shot now. I'm just going to clip your mask down at the bottom. Go. No worries. Moving on to our tuna. Half, so lever down, two and a half. I'm working down and up. I'm coming off just before where I start with my number three. Moving down to my two. The lever down, two, or two and a half. <laughs> Onto my two. Here we go. Now I'm going to concentrate on blending this in first. I'll work on my taper, sideburns, things like that as well in a sec. But I want to get this blending in done first. So I'm going to start at the back. My main focus is making sure we work with the oxygen of the bone here. Okay, so up and off, straight up. I want this to come and blend down to this point here, okay? Working it up and off. Working on that at the back then. There we go. Same thing here now. Let's it up and off.
and she's working over where the two was. Because sometimes certain hair types don't always pick up well with guards, especially wide guards like a number two. One half's all right, but a two, just find sometimes it just leaves longer here. But tends to just run right down to where the number two was, or any 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 length like that. Um, and this comb, when you when you press it flat against the skin, goes to number two. So if you have a little look, Liam, if you place the comb, the hair just comes through the comb. So it goes down to two, one and a half, you press hard. So that's why it's quite nice to be able to just run it flat on the hair and just cap off any of them longer hairs you miss with the guard. Looking on this side now. So that's the majority blended in to our transition area right here. Now I'm going to use my one and a half guard now to work around the side bends and also around the neck as well. So I want to just taper these down slightly just because they're quite thick and darker here. So we've got my one and a half guard on, leave it down and start to just taper the side bend in a bit tighter. Okay, leave it down and just work it up and off. It's going a little hard, like sort of quarter of a guard shorter. It just seems to just smoothen off the darker hair. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit difference in colour to the other side as well. I'm just working through the lever, just going to taper it down into the side bend. Like so, I'm just going around the ear as well. Nice classic tapering method. Give it any longer hairs that you may miss with the two. There you go. Same again this side, just 
taper it down. I need to go as high this time up. Seems very similar in colour. So I'll blend it down into the side there. There we go. Especially on this side. So there's a change of colour here. Just put on one and a half guard on. It just takes away a darker colour. Now I'm going to start to line out around the ears, sideburns and temple, just while we've got the extender on the back. So using a size one comb now, I'm going to start just to detail on the temple. And I'm, I'm just going to strengthen this up a little bit as well, so I might have to cut into it slightly. A lot of light baby hairs around the, side bit, around the sides here in the temple. So just by taking them away, it will sharpen it up anyway. What happens is actually cut into his hairline. And as you can see, a lot of lighter hairs here. So I'm just going to create the sideburn for him. So just coming straight down from there. Just going to work up and match. Get a nice, lean sideburn. Some of them baby hairs. And just taper the sideburns in. Would you like me to take the sideburns a bit shorter for you? Happy with the length? Yeah. Sorry, one second. No, no worries. Off a bit. That's alright, don't worry. Yeah. yeah, that'd be good, yeah. Just take them up a little bit, yeah? Yeah, I reckon. Alright, cool. I would say about there would be nice for you. So just about there. Okay, so you're still keeping yeah. sideburns yeah, and you're still keeping shape down the side of the face. But it's just not too long. Yeah, they just sneak up on you, I say. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that's it, of course, mate. That's it. Yeah. But yeah, you happy with that length? Is that yeah, okay, yeah? Cool. cool. There you go. So, a good thing about sideburns, keeping sideburns into the haircut like this, what it does, it helps when you're working on framing the face. By keeping that shadow just around there, it just creates a nice lean finish. The sideburns are too high and it cuts off quite high. It closes more face, so it, it just doesn't look right sometimes when you look straight on. So just keeping that sideburn and just a little bit of play there. Just that shadow, continuous shadow coming from the corner down and then take the mask off and then you see it hit the jawline. It just gives that little bit of a sharper finish. Into the ears now. Almost down. Just pulling the comb down into the hairline just to feed them hairs into the trimmer. And that way it just gives them a nice cleaner taper to allow a cleaner line to work around the ear. There we go. Just tapering on that one just to expose the hairline fully. I'll strengthen this off. Well, There we go, what I'll do for now, before we start to taper. Same thing on this side now.
So just match the side bends up. Now the best way to do it, don't use the ear because not everyone's ear is symmetrical. Okay, in fact, I don't think anybody's is from what I remember reading. So I always use my fingers. So index, middle, whatever you prefer, just place it on the side you've just cut, the side that you both liked, and then just work down on the sides until you match up. And there we go. And then all I do is I turn around, I turn my finger as well around that way, and then I've got my line on my side bend. Like that. Yeah, so that'll do until we start to work on our taper. I'll just tidy up the loose hair off the ears. And I'll pop Sam's mask back on as well. There we go. And then we'll work on the neckline. So, one and a half guard on, lever open. I'm working up and off. I'm not going to do too high because I don't want to go too high up into the occipital bone at the back there. I'm just going to work a nice low natural taper. There we go. Working down through the guard, through the lever. guard now. Leave it down. So it turns into a one and a half, but it's just a little bit shorter than the guard, the one and a half guard. I'm just working up a little bit into where that one and a half was. I'm just working down through the lever until I reach closed. And then open blade, lever open, so back, and moving up and off, like so, just above the bottom of the neckline, and just working down through the guard until it gets closed. There we go. Back onto our minis, just going to finish this lining out. Just 
actually using my one comb just to just blend in there. Just working against the way the hair grows, you can see the comb is changing direction. Just removing all that hair down the bottom. And the same here now. Just strengthen it off. Nice low taper. Awesome. Now what we'll do is we'll work through the top. So I will scissor over comb and everything on the back and side in a sec once I've connected in the top. So clips out. So I'm just wet the top, just got the clips out. Now I'm going to work it from the crown now, okay, again, crown is very important. You can make or break a good haircut. If it goes too short or anything like that at all, or it sticks up, which is even worse. Did you ever get that when you were a kid, Sam? Do you ever remember a little, like, getting haircuts in the past, like you might have had a little sticky up bit of the crown? That's what I said. <laughs> wow, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's just dead short, basically, yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work from the front back. So again, this is where I want to do the longest point. And all I wanna do is just graduate it. So again, if you look at the head shape, it goes down, comes up and then comes back. I just wanna go up nice and straight. So you can imagine what's gonna happen there. I'm gonna keep length in the crown, it's gonna be the true length at the apex, and it's getting longer towards the front. Okay, that's all I'm looking to do today. So you happy with me to take the length off that? I think works, yeah? Yeah, thank you. Sweet. So, nice, small section, picking it up, and I'm going to take off about that. So that way you've got enough for it to lie down and go over, and it can also go up as well. So roughly about, I don't know what you say that is, about half an inch. I'm just going to point cut into that as well, like that. Working back, just keeping the section small. There's my guide. I'm just keeping this all the way to just before the crown. Same angle, same length removal, just working all the way back. Now the crown is about three sections away. So I've got one. So, and then three, or just before the crown, yeah, that's right. There we go. So we'll still left the crown as it was when Sam came in. There we go, so by pulling that fringe up, we've left the length at the bottom. I'm gonna remove a little bit of that, but what we've done, we lifted it up, we want everything to match. So you pick it up there, it just gets longer as it gets towards the front, see, that's what we're looking for. Same thing again, just working on the right hand side now. Picking it from the front. I'm following my guy from the left, doesn't matter if it looks long, looks like there's more coming off, it doesn't matter, I'm following the guy from the left, so I know it's true, I know it's gonna work. Again, trust your guide. the transition in now. So we'll pull this back to the recession point. Put on the fringe from here. Pull that straight out. 
We're doing very, very small sections now. Now, the shape of my finger, I am completely parallel to the other side. So what that's doing is keeping that squareness in there as well. Okay? There you go, see that? It's got it nice and straight. Like that. That's what we're looking for. It's got it right into the clipper work on the side there. Same again. Pick it up, guy from behind. Same thing, nice and straight. I'm going to work down just through the back bit of here, just a little bit. I'm not near the crown, it's okay, the crown's over here. So I still start to transition this in. Maybe don't forget, lower your fingers down as you come down, following the same transition as from before. There we go. Let me see, I'm still leaving them in that fringe. So you do a bit of scissor comb now, just to blend that in. Make sure and cross check. in nicely there as well so same thing on the other side guide here side now. Work again for another session point. Nice small sections. here because that's the crown then there's the crown just sitting there put a scissor over comb to blend in I need to cross check like that making through There we go. 
I'm going to do it. I'll cut the fringe in for you now. So I'm going to do I'm going to layer this fringe in. So I'm pick it up. Should I bring it out a little bit like that? Put it nice straight, and that bit there is what's going to fall. Will be the length that I want. What I was doing is layering it from short to long and just allowing this to fall forward if you wanted to as well. So just layering it in, not having too much of a disconnection, not having too much of a disconnection on the fringe, just allowing it to all graduate in. So again, we're looking for different ways that someone can wear his hair today, not just in that one way of it being up or over. I want to give them options. There you go, there it was me. Breaking it up a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Just following the hairline around, making it around. I'm not keeping one side longer or bringing it all forwards. I'm just following it all the way around from corner to corner. There we go. Now, with the fringe, I'm just going to slide through the fringe, okay? Coming all forwards. I'm just going to slide just from this bit here. Slide through. We pull away as we get to the front. So if you want to wear it down, it's got that texture. Breaks it up as well. But I'm not doing deep enough texture that it'll stick out when he wears it up. Okay? There we go. Now, I'm going to pick it up again. I'm just going to point cut into this, just straight down. Uh, just to break it up a little bit. Not loads, just to break it up. So as you can see, I'm grabbing it quite low down to the base of the hair. I'm just cutting straight into it. Just to add that little bit of texture. Just one more bit into the fringe. Just gonna break up the fringe a little bit as well. Cutting straight into it. There we go. One more this side. Move towards music. There we go. Right. I'm going to dry it off now. Close your eyes for me a sec. So just finger drying it. Add a little bit of salt spray actually to this. Just add a little bit more bulk to the hair. Just add a little bit more dry, a little bit more thickness to the hair. So high speed, high heat. Let me just show you what this will do, right? So as we're drying it, you can wear it many ways, okay? So, drying it forwards, you can wear it down, a little bit broken up, across if you want to, a little bit over, whatever, right? You can also wear it up, 
come it up and off his face like that, the texture in there, like so he could wear it across like that see this length is a really nice length to allow him to do what he wants to and that's why I want to opt for that just so you could see that that's three looks there you can create with just one product a little bit of regal jump on my play ideal completely matte it's pliable you, can, you know you can keep reworking it through the day through the night and all that does it just allows you you know if you get bored which and I do I mean I get bored so quickly with my hair and a lot of gents that I speak to do as well so that's why I've always tried to add that into the game really is just do things that are easy for everyone to work with and, and give people options it's always a nice thing to do right. so the last thing we need to do now is the crown so dry it all off now what I'm going to do is I'm going to freehand cut the crown so you can see where it's hanging over there I haven't cut that bit yet so all that length through there it's not hanging over but what we can see is the more we cut off the shorter it'll go and the more it'll spike up so we can work just gradually by cutting little bits off at a time. Just getting that blend in. Just picking that up, pulling it out, put my guide underneath, and just cut into that. That falls over. So you see it's all blended in. We're just making sure we're keeping a bit more length in that crown. Let go of it. It all blends in nicely. Same again here. Pull it out. All blends in, right? We're going to pull it past the crown as well. So you can just over direct the top of the crown. Like that. There we go. This side as well. Pull it out. Cut into that bit. There we go. Pull this bit of the crown over as well. See what happens there. There we go. And just pick it up either side of the crown. See a little bit of it off there. There we go. Crown's all blended in. It's not sticking up. There we go. Nice. Cool. So to style, I'm going to use the Regal Gentleman Mac Clay. All right, just so you can see the different looks we can create. Okay, I'm going to use a tiny amount. Okay, literally a pea size. Okay, just that. Okay, it's all we need. Just make sure you rub it in through your fingers, inside your fingers as well, all the way through the palm of your hand. So this pretty much goes pretty clear, okay? That's what we're looking for. Now I want you to just start the crown, get a circle like that, just to coat the crown, and then just rub it in like a shampoo, okay? All the way through the hair. And through the sides, through the blend, and then through the bottom as well, okay? Now, one look is that. So up at the front, a little bit messy, a little bit textured. That's one look. You can wear that shows off the hairline. Let me take the mask off the jawline as well. You see that really popping out. That's one look you can create with this kind of length, okay? Just like that. So I'm just going to change the camera. There you go, one look with a piece size amount. I think it looks wicked. Suits your loads. Especially what I've just seen in the mirror. It's that kind of profile. Like that. I love the way that kind of flicks up at the front. All that texture through the back. Looks really thick as well. There we go. There's one look, right? Next look, I'll do your sweep, okay? Find it all down, like that. Let's do what you were originally having. That little sweep over, right? Bringing it in a part and bringing it over like that, okay? Personally, it looks nice. Again, I think it's a bit of a waste of what you could do with your hair. 
Mm. They're just wearing it flat and just over to one side, okay? And that is doable. We do here as well. That across. That's another look. Okay? A little more conservative, a little bit flatter. Right? You can do that as well. Another look you could do is wearing your fringe more down. Okay, so again, we go from the back, we go forwards, and then your hair a little bit more looser, more down, and then having that texture come out through the back, like that. So a bit more like a slightly sort of crop fringe element to it. In that texture, just twist up your fingers, create that bend, and we create a whole different look. You can see there. We create that look as well. So again, just a very simple, uniform cut. A little bit of texture through there, using the natural texture Sam's got. Do that. Which one would you prefer to wear today? I think the up one looks really good. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's up at the front, yeah? Yeah. So not just, not only that, look how pliable the clay is as well. I'm just literally running my fingers through it. It's not changing the hold yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. So imagine that you just like in the day, you know, working away, you've got somewhere to be in the night time. You have to put more product in. Mm. Turn your fingers through your hair, you're fine. There we go. I think that looks wicked personally. Now, would you just do me a favor? Could you just take your mask off for me? So just pull it down. Now, just see, we're keeping that way through there. Mm. It's really sharpened off the jawline. I think that looks cool. Change it completely. There we go. And that's it done, mate. Brilliant. Awesome, thank you, mate. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, Show you the back. That's a two. Into an isolate taper. Wow. On the neck. <laughs> and then just working through there. That's amazing. Looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Thanks, man. No, that's, that's the other. Happy, yeah? I, I see what the other guy was going on about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was bigging me up quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, pretty right. Pretty hell, he's Oh, thanks, man. That's the I've ever had. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Thank you. But the thing I want, I want to point out, though, as well, is that thing about uh, where you work to on the, on the, on the occipital bone as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you this now before we do our after shot. Mm. That I worked to that for that. I left that heavier because that would have protruded out more. If I pull that away, if it went too short, that really would have shown through, okay? So I just want to leave it in, but I just want to keep that little bit of length in there as well, just so you can see that nice little bit of texture in the blend. But I disguised it by just keeping it low. So by keeping that weight there and just sitting down, if I push that in, there's the bone there. So I push that in, it does protrude out. You see the way it sticks out like that, okay? I want to not show that off, obviously. So I'll hit that little bit of weight through there. Just a nice little tip. But if you've got someone who has a really protruding occipital bone, it, it, a lot of people, it's so common. But I was always a bit like, I, I, at first, I was just kind of going short and short. But then I noticed that if I, but the one thing I noticed was about a few years ago when the client walked at the door, I thought, God, you can, it looks like, it, like you've got a proper scar there. It was just because it was protruding out more than, more, more than you know, mine or whatever. Mm. So I thought, if I can get away with that by leaving it lower, then I think that's going to look better. So I tried it on the next time yeah. and it worked and he was happy. He didn't even know the first time, to be fair, but I knew, and that is the thing that bothered me the most. So, uh, yeah, so just, I always try and use that technique now when I'm doing anything like this. It does, yeah, exactly, that's right, yeah, 100%. So, yeah, uh, just to recap, um, we did a, uh, a low two back and sides, three, two and a half, two. Then we went into a low taper as well, so we didn't want to go too high, just again, because of the, of the occipital bone at the back. They want to kind of expose that too much or make it go kind of out, then out, and then in. So just a low taper. Blended it all in, and then through the top, I left a lot of the length through the front, just kind of slightly graduated it a bit more in, balanced everywhere else, because everywhere else was a little bit longer in certain places, kept the sides in and just done some slight little bit of texturizing, but just let the texture of Sam's hair do the job. So if, if, if everything's uniform, it'll fall really nicely. So uh, we just started three different ways. Well, we applied some of the Regal Gentleman Matt Clay, and we started three different ways. We wore it up, we wore it over to the side, and we wore it down. But again, that's, that's three ways. That's, that's enough, I think. If you can't get bored, that's a good number of ways to, yeah. to give yourself some options with, right? Yeah. Um, you chose to sit with it up at the front. Good choice. Did they all look really nice, to be fair? But I think this is my favourite. Mm. Um, I just think it suits your age. I think it suits your hair colour. I think it suits the style of what you're wearing. Jawline. I think it's great. Uh, and the hairline as well. Uh, and then, yeah. What was it, really? 
just a very simple but effective haircut. Perfect, thank yeah. you very much. Happy man, thank you very much. <laughs>